Is it actually worth selling textbooks on Amazon in 2024? moving into 2025. That's the topic that I wanna cover in today's video. And the reason I wanna cover this is because the book game, selling books on Amazon has changed tremendously over the years. I remember, you know, back in 2015, 2016, you could sell almost any book. You know, there weren't any restrictions, there weren't limitations. You know, you really didn't have to worry about getting sued by law firms and publishing companies, hiring law firms to attack you. There weren't as many counterfeit books, at least, you know, not from my understanding on Amazon and, and or Amazon just wasn't coming down on sellers as much as they are now. So is it worth selling textbooks in today's day of age? Well, I just watched a video from my good friend, Mike, over at The Used Book Guy. Give him a follow, Mike The Used Book Guy. He's a full-time Amazon bookseller. He's been selling for over five years now. He's actually a coach in Reselling Freedom. He has a great group himself, fantastic guy, and he keeps it real. That's one thing I respect about him. And, uh, you know, everybody has a different belief around textbooks. You know, Mike, he doesn't sell textbooks anymore. He, uh, he had a funny little quote that says, if you, uh, what was it? If you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes, something like that. I, I, don't, I don't know if I slaughtered the quote, but essentially he said, it's like, he's like, is it really worth selling textbooks? All it takes is one wrong textbook that you sell where you get sued by a law firm or it's counterfeit and your account could be gone. Matter of fact, I had uh, a good friend, Shannon, recently. He sold, he does uh, online arbitrage. So he's buying books from Amazon, flipping them back on Amazon. I think he does eBay to Amazon. He does thrifting as well. He had a lot of books that his virtual assistant team wasn't running through books run. And a lot of those books got him in trouble. Well, I think a couple, one or two of the books got him in trouble. I don't want to misquote him, but then he ended up discovering he had like 20 or 30 books in his inventory that didn't pass books run counterfeit calculator. And I made a video about this. I think it was in my last video where I said, do not sell a textbook unless you run it through books run counterfeit calculator. And essentially books run, it's like a, it's, it's a company that will buy back your books similar to sellbackyourbooks.com and they'll pay you money for books that you don't wanna sell on Amazon. So Mike, the used book guy, he doesn't sell textbooks on Amazon, but he shared in his last video, if he finds a textbook for a buck or two or $3, he'll see how much sellbackyourbooks.com or books run. I don't think he's using books run, but he's using sellbackyourbooks.com. Uh, he'll see how much they're paying him. And he shared an example where he bought a book for two and they paid him $20 and he got that cash instantly. He didn't have to list it on Amazon and wait for it to get checked in. And then a customer returns it. You literally get paid immediately. But I have friends of mine like Joji Davenport and Victor who flip a lot of textbooks and they'll focus on, I know Victor, he focuses a lot on high school textbooks. He's never had a problem with those. I know Joji, I think he avoids certain publishers like Pearson, I believe. And Joji, if you're watching this video, drop a comment down below and maybe I'll do an interview with Joji where we dive into the different publishers and the names and like the ones you should stay away from. To be honest with you, I'm not selling a ton of textbooks right now. For the folks who are watching me, you know that I flip a lot of DVDs. I flip a lot of electronics. I flip a lot of tools, board games, video games, and there's nuances for every category, but let's talk about textbooks. Is it worth selling textbooks in 2024 and 2025? Some people say yes. Why? Because the margins are super high, especially at thrift stores and library sales. You could pay two, three dollars and some for 80, hundred dollars. There's seasonal opportunities where textbooks during the off season, you know, maybe in May, or uh, you know, in March, right? Maybe after the January textbook season or the August, September, like in December, these textbooks plummet in price because nobody wants them. There's no demand for it. So the supply goes up, the demand goes down, the price goes down. And I have friends of mine who pick them up during the off season for 10, 12, $13 and flip them for 70 to $80 during textbook season. Why? Because the demand goes up. Everybody's looking for these textbooks and the school system literally scams all their students, which is terrible. And charges you $200 so these students have learned, hey, I could go online and get it for $80, $90 and save my money. If you're gonna flip textbooks, here's my advice, right? And I think everybody has different advice. Make sure you run the books through Books Run Counterfeit Calculator. And again, they have a database 
of the books that they know Amazon are kind of like on the lookout for and the law firms are, you know, teaming up with certain publishers and attacking sellers, that's the big risk. Run it through Books Run Counterfeit Calculator. If it's a really hot, new, super hot seller, be careful. Also, be careful of certain publishers like Pearson, I believe, has a higher likelihood of, of getting you in trouble. And again, if anyone here, like Joji or Victor, or anyone who's really flipping a ton of textbooks, share down below in the comments, what are the publisher names to really be on the lookout for? So, you know, there's pros. The profit margins are high. There's, there's great seasonal opportunities. If you're at the thrift store, you could find items that make you $50, $80, $100. The downside is, like Mike the Used Book Guy says, you know, you play these stupid games, you win stupid prizes. You know, you sell one wrong book and you could get sued and have to pay five, six, seven thousand $7,000 to unlock your account. You could sell a book that, you know, looks like it's real and it's actually a counterfeit. And then, you know, Amazon's going to ask you for an invoice and you don't have it. You know, that's the risk when you're thrifting. That's the risk even doing Amazon to Amazon or eBay to Amazon, right? Um, if you buy directly from Amazon or buy directly from a manufacturer where you have invoices, you know, you're a bit safer. You're a lot safer. Although funny thing, you know, I hear a lot of wholesalers and OA sellers say, you know, they kind of trash the thrifters and they trash the E to A and the A to A flippers. But I personally know, you know, I could probably count on two, two hands how many OA sellers and wholesale sellers I know who have invoices and Amazon still shuts them down with invoices because they're like, that invoice isn't good enough. We want you to go to your supplier and get their invoice and then the invoice, they want you to keep going up the chain. It's insane what Amazon's doing lately, but this is the game we're playing now. So, you know, you try to be as safe as you possibly can. Run your books through Books Run Counterfeit Calculator. Be careful of too hot of sellers, like books that are just selling way too fast certain publishers like Pearson, be careful and keep an eye out in the community. You know, if you're in different Facebook groups, if you're in Reselling Freedom, if you're part of like Joji or Victor's community, right? Or Mike's community, you know, we'll let you know when issues happen or people, you know, in the community have an issue with a certain publisher, they'll let you know. So stay in tune with the community. But, you know, I think it's different for everybody, right? If, if you're going to sell textbooks, I would say be very, very careful. Just know that you could get sued. I personally know, again, on two hands, People who have gotten sued for five to 10, even more, $20,000 to get your account back from these different, you know, from these law firms that are suing sellers. And then you have to hire a, a lawyer and then you have to write a plan of action. And then sometimes to hold your account hostage. It's really nasty. So, you know, the good news is there's plenty of books that you can sell that aren't textbooks. And if you do flip a textbook, you could sell it to sellbackyourbooks.com or Books Run who have these special connections. I forget what it's called. I know Avery, Roma the Roma over there, go to Lister. There's a certain program. I think you could pay like 50 or 100 grand. And I think, I don't know if it's Amazon or they, there's a third party company that will like come and certify you and train you. What's it called? Somebody help me out. But anyways, it's expensive. But some of these big companies, they do it. So like they have these special relationships where the law firms aren't going to come after them. I don't know if that's personally what Books Run and sell back your books are doing but I you know I hear things in the community so you know anyways they can sell those books so sell them to the to the buyback companies run your books through books run counterfeit calculator sell books that are not textbooks or even sell them on eBay although you might not realize this you can still get in trouble selling counterfeit books on eBay and the law firms I've actually heard will even come after you on eBay as well so you've got to be very very careful nowadays that's why I love selling you know DVDs and other items as well but all different items in different categories have different risks. There's nuances with electronics that aren't the same for books. There's nuances with board games. There's nuances with Lego. There's nuances with health and beauty. So whatever category you're in, be aware of the risks and do the best you can to mitigate the risk. A scared money doesn't make any money. If you're gonna sell on Amazon, you have to know it's a jungle nowadays and you've gotta be somewhat savage. I don't know what to say understand the rules of the game, mitigate risk as much as you can, and don't risk any more money than you can have taken away by Amazon if they hold your account hostage. I don't know what else to say, but if you're gonna play in this game, you're gonna have to take a risk, and some people are gonna say, I don't wanna do that, then don't be in business. I don't know what else to say. Doesn't matter what business you're in, there's no such thing as being in a business where there's no risk. There's risk with everything. Every single business has inherent risks and Amazon certainly does as well. So hopefully this helps a little bit. Let's get some conversation going down below in the comments. But with that being said, smash that like button. Much love. And if you want to continue to learn more about selling on Amazon, growing your business, learning about Amazon, to Amazon flips, eBay to Amazon, online arbitrage, thrifting, library sales, 
check out my community. It's called Reselling Freedom. We have over 300 members in there. We have over 12 coaches. We're having anywhere from three to seven live coaching calls a week. I think this month we had over 20 something we're going to have in total for the month of October. So come in, hang out, come to the live calls, learn, apply, make some money and uh, grow your business. So yeah, resellingfreedom.com. But thanks so much for watching guys. Much love and keep on picking and making that money. Oh,